Hello cats and kittens, I am Lex, the crochet fiberist, and you are watching episode 4.A, wow, 4A, um, which is our Rediscovered Stitches Crochet Tech episode. Um, I think I mentioned it in episode 4, but um, for the next couple of weeks when I do an episode, uh, we're going to have a crochet tech class um, that is kind of adapted um, and expanded from a Rediscovered Stitches class I did at Cognitive Fiber Retreat this year in Tehachapi, California. So uh, if you are a, who, a attendee of that uh, Cognitive Fiber Retreat and you took my class, um, this is what in a perfect world I would have loved to do. Just sit down and present to you and really allow you to get an understanding of where I'm coming from with crochet fabric. I think when I speak about rediscovered stitches, I am speaking in the context of making fabric that's suitable for sweaters, um, socks, fingerless mitts, arm warmers, the whole hail kit and caboodle. Crochet for a long time because of the way the structure has um, often gotten an reputation of being very, very boxy and very, very stagnant in a way that isn't always useful and has been perceived to create fabric that is so much bulkier than knitting, it doesn't seem to work very well as a fabric on its own. I'd like to challenge that idea and I'd like to present some stitches that you may know, you may not know, um, that can give you a really, really beautiful fabric that might be just what you're looking for. So that's really what's going to go on here. Today we're going to do um, maybe a little bit of intro and then I will introduce the first stitch. And the first stitch has two different aspects. So let's get started. Um, the first stitch is the Trinity stitch. And the Trinity stitch, let me show you some examples of it. Now, here I am coming to you. This, you can see that is a Trinity stitch. This is a fantastic sock I made a couple years ago. Um, alas, I can't wear it anymore because it is, um, <laughs> its brother died a horrible, painful death. But you can see the grid-like uh, structure of this stitch. And here's another. Um, I made this as a um, example to for the people who took the class at uh, Cognitive. Here is an example of that Trinity stitch. Those were both in the round. Let me see if I can find something. I think I do have something. A lot of my color, the colors in my projects are dark blue, so it's often hard to see. Um, it's not always easy to see, but here you go. This is what I use as a modified um, Trinity stitch to Trinity pattern when I am working uh, back and forth in standard crochet. Um, so I like this fabric a lot for um, clothing. Uh, this is an old sweater I did maybe this is about four years old. It's not a perfect sweater. It's uh, I went through a phase where I wanted to make the perfect crochet sweater. And as you can see, there are some uh, hits and near misses. And this one I like a lot. I think it's a hit in a lot of different ways, Spe specifically because it is, um, it's made of a really incredible yarn. This is 100% cashmere from Jade Sapphire. But if you look very, very closely, you will see that I incorporated some of that Trinity stitch pattern to make it uh, to um, add a little bit more structure without making it really um, boxy. And here it is in the round. All right, so let's get started. Um, I think if you have a moment, pause this video, go grab some yarn. I'm going to be, I was trying to decide which yarn to use. 
Um, I love this yarn. This is uh, Malabrigo Rios and or no, this is Arroyo in the Va colorway, which is a bluey, greeny um, colorway. But I think we're going to stick with this one because I already have a project in this. And this is um, this is also Malabrigo and they're super fine merino. It's a sport weight. Um, so I will be using for this particular project, I will be using an I 4.5 or 5.5 millimeters. And yeah, so let's get started. Now, you start the way all crochet patterns start a slip knot. Now, when you're working, if I was working this project in the round, I would make some different decisions um, because I we're going to start with just a uh, piece that's going to be maybe 15 stitches long. Um, I would start with a foundation chain, a half double foundation chain, and here's how to construct that. So we've got loop, unhook, yarn, tensioned. Uh, find whatever way works for you. I've seen it in all sorts of configurations. Some people don't physically tension their yarn, and but in crochet you kind of have to because you're only dealing with one um, manipulating um, item. Not like knitting when you're working with two, but even then you should still um, tension your yarn. But yeah, tension your yarn. I just take my uh, pointer go over the yarn like so. So again, slip knot on hook, yarn over, chain through one. Okay. Now we're going to yarn over, chain through two. And this is where a regular, if you kept doing that, you would be constructing a standard um, chain to build your stitches on. I personally am iffy about that because it's hard to keep all your chains um, really, really loose and really easy to pick uh, stitches up for your first row. That's the reason I prefer doing a foundation chain. It became very, very popular. I believe Doris Chan has done some really excellent work in pioneering that skill. And hey, that's another skill to add to your toolbox. Um, there is there are a lot of reasons to do it a lot of different ways, but this is what I do. So we've got two loops that have been done and a loop on our hook. Now we're going to turn our work. Normally when you're chaining, you just let the loop fall down, cascade down. Now we're going to turn and we are going to go through the second loop. Do you see that? We are going to be sticking, we're going to be yarning over like you would for a half double crochet. And you're going to, without pulling this yarn over through or doing anything other than keeping it on your hook, you're going to insert your hook through your second loop. All right, then we're yarning over and then pulling through. So at this moment, you will have three. You will have three loops on your hook. Have a look, okay? And when you're done, you're gonna do the standard closing of the crochet stitch. Yarn over, pull through three stitches. Is that not wonderful? I love it. Now you have begun your half double foundation chain but you have not finished your foundation chain. Um, I think the place where most people have issues is what do you do after this? Um, but what's helped me is kind of seeing this stitch as a little W. You see stitch one, stitch two, stitch three. Now what you're gonna do is yarn over again, like we're doing another half double, and we are going to insert through that last series of stitches. So remember, we have this, we have this 
series of stitches, we have this series of stitches, and we have this series of stitches. We're going to stick our hook through the last series of stitches. Now, look when you're, you're stitching. Make sure you get through two loops as you're pulling through. Um, if not, it's going to be a very messy stitch, and it's not going to look right. So, let me repeat that. Yarn over, insert hook through, series of stitches, okay? We're going to yarn over and pull through. And then we're going to yarn over and pull through all three of those stitches. Now, we're going to repeat that process. If you're new to this stitch process, I would do as many as you can stand. Um, because we are learning a stitch um, it might be easier to just stick with the 14 stitches that we're going to start with. Um, give me a second. Let me make sure that's correct. <laughs> um, this uh, Trinity stitch that I'm talking about is uh, worked in multiples of two stitches, and then you add plus three for your standard um, project. So we are going to create 15 stitches. The great thing about working with um, the great thing about working with a foundation chain is once you're done, you have a row one of whatever you're do working on done. Now that doesn't necessarily mean it's row one of a given pattern, unless your first the, the first row of your given pattern is a half double crochet, but it's a really good basis to start your project. So let me uh, work up 15 stitches, which is uh, 12 stitches plus three, multiples of two plus three, and we'll get started. I like giving you more than one repeat of the pattern so you have a chance to practice in a way that's really useful to you. So let me see how many stitches I have. And the best part about using a foundation chain is it's incredibly easy to tell how many chain, uh, stitches you made. If you do a regular chain as your uh, first row or as your beginning row, um, sometimes it's hard to tell how many uh, stitches you have, particularly if they're not uniform and they're not, um, they don't have, um, if you, if you manipulated the way you made your uh, chains, so they're not even. So here, let me, let me go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right. Twelve. 13, 14, and 15. All right, so join me back. We're at 15 stitches. Um, it should look a little bit like this. If you have any questions, I'm Lexicom on Ravelry. Just drop me a note. We can talk about it. We can work it out. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to create a series of clusters on this row, but they're a very specific sort of cluster. So let me show you what I mean. So the first stitch, the first stitch that presents itself to you, the stitch that the yarn is coming out of, you can work into this stitch. That doesn't always happen in patterns. Different designers have different opinions on that. For me, I like working on the uh, right on that stitch but if you're on but you don't need to on this one so don't work into that stitch the next stitch I want you to work a half double crochet into that stitch okay and now we are going to do a cluster now I don't know if you've done clusters before uh, this class is really for a uh, 
advanced beginner, intermediate, crochet. But here's what's going on here. I am going to insert my hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through a loop. So I've got two loops on my hook right now. Normally, in order to make a single crochet, you would yarn over and pull through. You're closing that loop. You're closing that stitch. We're not going to close the stitch. We're going to insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through a loop. We're going to repeat that one more time. Yarn over, insert into the next stitch, pull through. Now, here's what we're, oh, sorry, yarn over, sorry, yarn over, pull through. You've got four stitches. What we're going to do is yarn over and pull through all of those stitches, okay? So there's a cluster. There's an awesome little cluster to get you started. What do we do next? We're going to do something that will make more sense as you go to the next row. We are going to yarn over and pull through and create a chain, okay? Woot, so there you go. So we have a cluster. We have an, a, a three stitch cluster. Hopefully you can see that. So what are we gonna do next? for the Trinity stitch. The interesting thing about the Trinity stitch is that your first, the first leg of your cluster, each of these clusters, this cluster, I don't know if you can tell, this cluster has three legs. The cluster, moving forward, each cluster is going to start on the final leg of, or the final stitch of the last cluster. Let me show you what I mean. So we have the three clusters and the chain one, right? So we are going to insert in that last stitch that we created a cluster in. I'm gonna yarn over, pull through. We're gonna yarn over, pull through. We're gonna yarn over, pull through. We're gonna do that. Then we're gonna yarn over and pull through all four stitches. Now we are gonna repeat this till the end of the row. So Come back, I'm working on it now, and we will talk about what's gonna happen next, okay? Okay, so if you're doing this correctly, you will end on the last, the last stitch will be on the last cluster. Here's something you are going to have to remember though. On the very last stitch, right there, after you create the last cluster, you are going to do another half double crochet. Understood? So just in that same stitch, remember, yarn over, insert hook through loop, uh, through uh, stitch, yarn over, pull through loop, yarn over, pull through three. Now, you have finished row one. And if you did it right, it should look a little like this. Okay? Now, I mentioned that this is called the Trinity stitch. The stitch is called the Trinity stitch. What I should tell you is what I'm showing you is called a modified Trinity stitch. Because if you turn, as crocheters want to do, you start working the back, you are going to create another set of Trinity stitches, but they're not gonna line up. They're not gonna build in ways where you can specifically see the Trinity stitch. So in the round, that's exactly what you do because you're always working on the public side. Um, you are always work stacking those Trinity stitches on top of each other. And that's really, really good to know. And it works very well in, um, in the round project. But if you're not working in, in the round project, you still want to see the Trinity stitch all on the public side. You're gonna have to do something different on the back side. 
now or on the private side. So on row two. Now, what I used to do was just a single stitch all the way around. It doesn't work very well. So here's what I've kind of figured out. Now, this is something that most I've seen online before, but that's why I'm calling it rediscovered stitches. It's something you've seen online, but it may not be a popular bit of knowledge. So go back to your project. Okay. Take your hook. So we're turning. Here's what we're not doing. We're not chaining. Not on this project. So on that first loop, do you see the loop that your uh, yarn is coming out of? I want you to construct a half double crochet. So what is that again? A half double crochet is yarn over, insert hook into stitch, yarn over, pull stitch, uh, pull yarn over out, yarn over, go through three stitches. So that's what you do the first stitch. Now, if you're looking, you will notice that there is a stitch that kind of slants. Let's see if you can see it. You might not be able to see it with right there. That stitch kind of slants. What you want to do is work two half double crochets in that slanty stitch. So here we go. Yarn over, insert through hook or sorry, yarn over, insert through stitch, pull through. So that's your first half double crochet. And then you work another one in that stitch, okay? And then you're going to see this very, very weird quasi stitch. That is the top of your, let's see, can you see it? I'll stick my hook through it so you can see right there. And that is the top of your Trinity stitch that you made on the row below, but it was heading in a different direction. You don't want to work in that stitch. It's hard to work in it. It's much smaller than these slanty stitches. So what you're going to do is just skip that stitch. Okay. So we're going to go to the next stitch and we're going to do two half double crochets in the same stitch okay so we're skipping a stitch and we're working two half double crochet stitches now I want to see you guys figure it out and work through the rest of that row okay and I'm doing it too so you don't think I'm just like magically ooh look I have a very large version of it um, if I were smart, I would have made step outs, but I like the idea of an organic relationship here. So here, work until you're at the next to last stitch, okay? That next to last stitch should be two half doubles together, or two half double crochets in the same stitch, like so. All right, last stitch, we're gonna do another half double crochet. Okay. Now, so that is what that looks like. Okay. We're on row three and we are going to do the same thing. The only difference is, and this is something you might want to keep an eye out because if you don't do this right, you're going to, your, your pattern is going to get distorted is to work your after you turn remember you're turning no chaining you are going to work an hdc in the first stitch so here's the first stitch that's where you're going to be putting your uh, hdc so yarn over insert hook through stitch yarn over pull through loop pull yarn over pull through three loops all right and then we're going to work that same Trinity stitch again. So insert hook into stitch, yarn over, pull through two loops, next stitch, yarn over, pull through three stitches on the hook. Go to the next stitch, yarn over and pull through four stitches 
on the hook, yarn over and pull through all four, okay? And then you chain, and we're gonna repeat that to the end of the row. And that, cats and kittens, is literally all you need to do for this stitch. Now, this stitch has a lot of applications for sweaters. Um, I use it a lot when I'm doing regular crochet because I find it makes a really pretty fabric. And sometimes if I wanna create another, if I wanna add another bit of interest, after I do row two with the, um, with the two HTCs in one stitch, I do a row of half doubles or singles just to kind of um, just for just for a different look. It's it's a very interesting option. So yeah. So at the end of the row, you should have finished your half double. And keep in mind when you are sorry, you should finish your Trinity stitch. And keep in mind your last stitch on the Trinity row. Um, your last stitch, you should have completed your um, complete your last uh, Trinity stitch. Don't chain when you create that uh, half double crochet on that same on that same stitch. Just do a regular. Just just add a half double crochet. You do not have to chain that, and it won't help if you do. So as you can see, this is a really really simple project. Really really easy. That again is um, the Trinity stitch. Uh, you need a multiple of two plus three stitches. And I will write down all the stuff that we talked about. Um, it should be showing on the screen. And I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, part two is going to be the Trinity stitch in the round. And we might work up a little knit. So I'm glad you enjoyed yourself. I hope to talk to you soon. Bye.